Here's how to make your own homemade Welsh rarebit. Proper comfort food. Wow. All right, so the ingredients are fairly minimalistic. I am half Welsh and please, I've got to tell you, this is not just glorified cheese on toast. It is so much more than that. It's comforting, you can customize it. You're gonna love it. Please, please try it. First things first, we've got a loaf of white bread here, which we're gonna slice into nice, big, thick chunks. We're gonna make a roux. Uh, so we've got some uh, butter and flour here. So that's just fairly standard, but one of the first things we'll do. But then it gets taken to Flavor Town, and this is where you can customize it as much as you want. Uh, this is some cayenne pepper. Uh, you could use paprika, or you could use some hot sauce, Tabasco, something like that instead. Some real heat in there, which again, you can customize to your liking. You could omit it if you want, but you really want that punch. We've got some English mustard powder here as well. So rather than the powder, if you want, you could literally dollop in some English mustard. Worcester sauce. Uh, a lot of people forget that this has actually got anchovies in it. So you do want to do a vegan or vegetarian equivalent. There are alternatives. For the cheese, uh, this is just some cheddar, uh, which was in our fridge. And I really hope uh, the family weren't wanting to use this, but you could uh, use a Welsh variety uh, like Caerphilly, um, but tread carefully when you go to the supermarket cheese bun, sorry. But something Welsh I did get this morning was, uh, this happened to just be from a Welsh brewery. This is a, a tropical IPA, so um, this is obviously alcohol. Uh, you could use a stout as well. If you don't want to use an alcohol, um, you can use alternatives like apple juice if you wish. That kind of still just gives you that little bit of flavor. And then we've pushed it. You can use milk, full fat, semi-skimmed, skimmed, um, but we've gone for cream. Uh, and even this is like heavy cream to Americans, like the full fat double cream. Proper comfort food, let's get going. So I wish that I went to the supermarket and got that slice for me. <laughs> They've got a machine that does it all for you, but there's something nice about using your serrated knife on the bread. I have grated my cheese kefili. A lot of cheese, but that's gonna really help thicken that sauce as well. You can tweak how thick or thinner you wanted it based on the fluids later on. The smell in this kitchen already. I've just sliced bread and grated cheese and it smells amazing. I'm gonna do three different ways with the bread. So one slice, we're gonna bung in the toaster, uh, toast it either side and it's absolutely fine for it to cool down. That's possibly the most traditional way I've ever known. Other people like to take another slice of bread, place it under the grill and just brown one other side leaving a sort of softer uh, top, which you then put the roux on. So you've got like a crispy bottom, but more the roux seeping in, which is kind of nice. The third one, we're gonna bung in the air fryer. The whole thing is gonna be made in there, so we'll just toast it in that. And there's our free breads. So the classic uh, toaster, both sides, uh, which has charred the most. Air fryer, really good one side, and then like four little dots in each corner on the other side, randomly. And kind of like the extreme opposite of the toaster where we grilled it, lovely color on one side and completely blank on the other. So you would put the filling on the non-toasted side. I'm normally team toast, but to be honest, I don't really care. Let's make our roux, boing. We've got that bubbling, wanting to jump up on the camera lens, but we're not gonna let it. Heat goes down, shimmy in that flour. Ooh. And whisk like a madman, okay? All right, that's looking good. So now, Flavor Town. The Worcester sauce. Oh, it's making it angry. The cayenne pepper, the mustard powder. It's whisking it all through, look at that. Ah, oh, I'm nearly burning my arm, but it's good. All righty, so in goes that cream. This feels so cheeky. I mean, really, milk would be fine, but if you're gonna go all out, you might as well do it properly. Oh, look at that. It's like, hello. I've actually done a mustard cake on the channel before that smells a lot like that. Big mustard, how dare you? But we're not done yet. Oh. I've normally used like a darker colour one before in the past, but it's all about that flavour. Start to warm that up and then, mate, you can join it, okay? Because that, if you look at it right now, is a little bit too thin at the moment, so we're going to change that. We'll start to add in the cheese. Here we go. I might try and get some in the saucepan as well. <laughs> that residual heat is melting the cheese into the sauce. Oh, it smells ridiculously good. Look how smooth that is and it's thickening up 
as it cools down. So I'm gonna keep whisking it, and here's three random Welsh rarebit facts. The first one being that it doesn't actually contain any rabbit. That's the most common question. Does Welsh rarebit contain rabbit? Years ago, rabbit was super expensive. So a budget version using cheese was how Welsh rarebit came about. However, these days, cheese is probably more expensive than rabbit, and generally that might be a myth. No one actually knows the truth. Number two, apparently, if you blend tomato soup into a Welsh rarebit, you get something called a blushing bunny, but we're sticking with the rarebit today. The third one, and this actually quite offends me as a half Welsh person, from the cheeseprofessor.com, there's no definitive proof that this dish is actually Welsh. So why is Welsh in the name? The use of Welsh was actually used as an insult in the 1700s in Britain in the same way as the word Welch, W-E-L-C-H which was actually used as a massive insult. So maybe they just assumed everyone in Wales couldn't afford rabbit and that, maybe that all links together. It could all be lies. All I know is this is blooming gorgeous. All right, air fryer bread, sticking that in there. We're gonna coat it now. So remember the toast, it's all cold. You could do the toast now if you want as it's cooling down, but you're gonna fight a losing battle and it's gonna get warmed up anyway. Huddle it on there like that and just let it kind of find its way. Interesting to see the toasted side versus the non-toasted, if it soaks more, if it seeps into the bread maybe. Depending on what type of L you go for, apple juice, this colour might look slightly different. This kind of looks like Kinder Bueno filling, and I am not against that. Onto the air fryer. Nice. It's hard to think that there's cheese in there though. There we go. Check that out, awesome, right? And as it sort of cooled down, it has formed a skin on top. So it's sort of staying in place. Time to grill it. And that is uh, grill, UK grill. If you're American, that would be your broiler, okay? The heat from above. Don't go putting it on your barbecue. Well, that'd be pretty cool. And I also really want to make a sandwich out of this now. Do you imagine that? Like a sandwich, like two of these wedged together with the cheese spilling all out. And then you drench it on top again. I might do that as a bonus scene. And this one into the air fryer. So just while they're air frying and grilling, thank you to the names on the screen right now, including Mark Allison, who gives me an in-depth critical analysis. I love it, Mark. Thank you of all my extended videos on Patreon. So if you want to support the channel, please consider doing so. Let's see what these turn out like. Ooh. Our general feeling is that the air fryer is going to work and come out first, right, Tom? That's right. I think it's going to be done fairly soon. Literally up here. Look at that bubbling away. I want to get a little bit of charring on there. The browning is starting to happen slightly. Oh my word. For reference, uh, the air fryer is still going, not getting that color on the top. Speaking of color, ah, oh, I can do my trick. My friend, I, my, I have Welsh friends. My friend Rob told me this. He used to do like cross marks in his Welsh rare bit. I think to maybe catch some more Worcester sauce. Oh yeah, look at that. I mean, I, he did not use a chopstick. <laughs> But look, you can see how that's actually creating. Oh, wow, a nice little grid. Okay, so. Oh, there we go. Can you see the Worcester sauce? Like just hitting that surface and finding its way into those little puddles, those crosses. Oh, look at that. Oh! Now, air fryer one. This is completely optional, but I've got some more cayenne pepper here. And I've just, you probably can't even see that. Just putting it through a teeny little sieve. The other toast's got that sort of gap in the middle where, you know, it's just uncooked fluffy bread. This is our grill. Looks the same. It all does look the same, doesn't it? Including the air fryer, although the bread was more crisped up on this. We might get an even better crunch. We didn't. Okay, so let's go with the first one, the toaster, which is probably the preferred method. Wow, I feel like I'm watching Titanic. That's amazing getting like, quite emotional over it. The, the depth of the flavour, the richness, the heat, but then still with that comfortness of the toast and its cheese, and it's still slightly warm. That is, if you can have it warm, obviously, you're not filming, eat it warm. But how does that compare to the grill one? Oh, the flavour is absolutely the same, but the texture, bizarrely, the grill one is, is actually tougher. It's, it's weird, like this, that, that main bit that's been grilled, it's almost like created a really firm crust on it. Which does not bode well for the air fryer one because that got proper cooked up. Is this gonna be like a crouton? Hmm, no. Wow, 
That's actually my favorite consistency. The smoothness, the softness of the bread underneath is pillowy, kind of like how I expected the grill or the broiler to be. The toast is good, it's consistent, it's got that, that spank, that crunch. Absolutely phenomenal, no matter how you have it. Hope you found this video interesting. A little bit of my half-blood Welshness coming out and uh, just some hints and tips and some myths. Remember, they're just myths. Debate them down below. For Patreon, I'm gonna do quite a bonus naughty thing right now with uh, a double stack. See you later.